Okay, it is two minutes past three, so we shall get started. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone from around the world. I'd like to welcome and thank you for joining our joint webinar with Autonomo, Become a Data Analyst Rockstar, Accelerate into the Fast Lane of Traffic Management Big Data Analysis. First, I'd like to introduce you to our two speakers. First of all, we have Bart uh, on the left. Um, Bart is the founder and CTO of XYZT.ai and has held senior leadership positions at Luciad and Hexagon, where he was the product management director and chief innovation officer. Bart holds a PhD in computer science at the KU Leuven and a postdoc from Stanford University. On the right, we have Rob, and Rob is based out of the Netherlands and has over 20 years experience at multinational technological companies in various senior sales and marketing roles. At Autonomo, Rob leads the engagement with global automators, auto, automakers like PSA, Toyota, JLR, and others based outside of Germany. He also leads the development of Autonomo's enterprise data consumer activities, helping them utilize connected vehicle data to fuel their applications and business processes. Before joining Autonomo, Rob was responsible for strategic accounts on a global level of Fortinet. Prior to that, Rob held senior positions at blue chip companies like Cisco, HP, and F5 Networks. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Rob. So let's take a look at what Bart and Rob will be discussing with you today. Um, first of all, we'll dive into the presentation, setting the traffic management and measurement scene. And there's also a little bit of a history lesson in there for you as well. Uh, Bart will then show you some great hints and tips on how to become that data analyst, uh, data analyst rock star that we promised, showing you the power of combining the data from Autonomo and the um, XYZT.AI platform. Uh, for a little bit of interactivity during the presentation, we'll run four polls as we'd like to uh, know your thoughts on a few topics, and then we'll wrap up and finish with the, the Q&A session um, at the end. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, can you please ask them via the Q&A box um, or in the chat area, and we'll try and answer as many of them um, as we can at the end, uh, time permitting. Uh, depending on how many, if we don't get around to all of them, uh, we will provide answers to the questions in a, in a follow-up email um, afterwards. And the webinar will be recorded and shared after the webinar, so we'll try to do this as soon as possible um, within the next sort of 24 to, to 48 hours. So now, without further ado, I'll hand you over to, to Bart and Rob. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, thank you for the very nice introduction. So I'm Bart from XYZT.ai, um, and I'm going to give a demo later on with the Autonomo data, and I'm very, very happy to have Rob uh, on this webinar. But first, I want to talk about uh, something interesting. Um, I think in April, uh, just during the corona crisis, there was this very interesting paper from uh, researchers in nat nature communications where they showed that traffic jams, traffic congestion actually spreads like a virus. So basically what happens when a traffic builds up from one street to the other, there's like traffic jams in uh, uh, basically spreading throughout the road network. And the model that defines this spreading is basically similar to how, how a virus, even like the coronavirus spreads. I know you, you're all pretty tired of hearing about uh, COVID-19, but it's an interesting research fact. And in fact, the way that they now have defined the model will allow them to basically find a vaccine to basically uh, solve traffic congestion. And the source of this model is actually data. The researchers collected lots and lots of traffic data um, to be able to find this um, uh, novel finding. So traffic me measurement is extremely important, not only for smart cities, but also for different applications like research or for example, insurance uh, and other industries. But how do you go about and, and measure traffic? And today I'm gonna show you that there's different ways. And if you want to become a rock star, you should know about those different ways. And the first way is what has people have been doing for a long, long time. And this is a good example from the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, where they basically started synchronizing traffic lights by in real time measuring the flow of traffic and then adapting uh, the time that those lights were on and off. And by doing so, they were able to reduce travel time by 12% and increase the speeds by 16% in those sections. And this looks like a small advancement, but if you know the city of Los Angeles, 
and I'm going to show a lot of that in the in the demo later or in the in the tutorial later on. Um, it's a big deal in Los Angeles, um, and that brings me to um, the little history quiz that um, that Joe was talking about. There's actually two ways to look at traffic flow, um, and those two people here are actually rock star mathematicians from the 18th century. And the left one is Euler. Euler was first, and uh, the right one is Lagrange. And Lagrange was actually a student of Euler. And they have basically two opposing views to look at traffic flow. Um, Euler, what he says uh, when you look at flow is, you have to position yourself in the environment surrounding the flow, and then look around what's going on. And with traffic, you can do that by, for example, using those counter lines. And the counter lines um, that, that, that you can install in the streets, in the city, uh, or elsewhere, they then counter traffic. They can also detect what type of traffic is passing by. Uh, you can also do it by different equipment, like, for example, traffic cameras. Um, and that's what cities and governments have been doing to measure traffic. And this is, this is basically the Eulerian way of looking at flow. Um, it's a costly way because you have to put a lot of infrastructure in the environment. And you have not only have the equipment, but also the cabling and so on. And that brings me to the first poll, Joe. Yeah, the, the first one here is about traffic counts in LA. So how uh, many manual and automatic traffic counts are performed uh, each year in Los Angeles, 6,000, 600,000, or 6 million. So it should be up on your screen now. I'll just give you a few seconds to make your choices. Okay, answers are still coming in. I'll give everyone just a little bit longer. Right, thank you. Okay, so it seems everyone is really going for six million, Bart. What, what do you think? Yeah, it's a contrived question, I, I admit. Um, so the actual answer is, is 6,000. And it, of course, depends year over year. Um, but think about it, 6,000 measurements throughout the city for an entire year with so many streets, so many highways in the city, you have a very sparse set of measurements. Um, and that basically brings me um, to Lagrange. And Lagrange had an opposing view of looking at flow. Basically, what Lagrange said is, if you want to, to look at flow, simulate flow, measure flow, you have to position yourself in the flow and move with the flow. And that's basically what cars are doing. Cars are moving in the flow. And this way, every car becomes a sensor. If the car is moving, you know that the flow is moving at a certain speed. If the car is still is standing, then you know that there's probably a traffic jam if there's multiple cars. So every car becomes a sensor. And this is my first rock star tip. Start using data the Lagrangian way. Um, second poll question, just to yeah. illustrate the effect effectiveness, Joe. Yeah, so poll question two. So this one is um, all out. The vehicle registrations in LA. So how many vehicles are registered in Los Angeles? Options are 1 million, 2 million, or 8 million. Let's make your choices now. Okay, the answers are coming in. Give it a few more seconds more. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, everyone is, well, the majority are going for 8 million. Okay, good. That's so good. What we could, so what it's, indeed, it's indeed uh, over 8 million, um, which basically makes that, and, and this is not even counting the cars that are passing through LA County. So this is like, you have millions and millions more of cars. So think about it. Every car could be a sensor that measures the traffic around the car. And that's what Lagrange said. You have to move with the flow. Um, and that basically brings me to our guest today, Autonomo, um, who's going to explain how they solve this um, data collection challenge. Rob? 
Thanks, Bart, for, uh, for a wonderful uh, introduction. So the next five to seven minutes, I would like to explain who Autonomo is, what we do, how we do it, and what kind of value it brings to our customers. So we move to the next slide, please. So about Autonomo, we are a scale-up. We raised uh, $82 million. Uh, We're quite an innovative company. We're, uh, we have 26 patents pending, and we're a global company. So we have people working in the US, in Europe, and Japan, and our headquarters is in Israel. We are an automotive data services platform. So like Bart explained, basically the car is becoming a sensor. It's sensing the data uh, from, from the car. It's taking the data from the car, but it's also sensing the environment with new equipment like ADAS. We have access to 22 million cars uh, worldwide, and that leads to a whopping 330 billion uh, miles driven. And every day we incur uh, 2.6 billion data points. And that's growing day by day. What's also growing is the number of OEMs we are basically having on our platform. So to name a few, we have contracts with PSA, with FCA, Daimler, BMW, Porsche, uh, Mitsubishi, Renault, and that is also growing. And their cars are basically all equipped with a telematics control unit. So in fact, becoming a sensor or becoming a driving mobile phone. If we move to the next slide, I'll explain to you how our company looks like from a schematic point of view. So on the left-hand side, we have what we call data providers, and that can be OEMs that have cars that are connected, but not all cars are connected. It could also be through aftermarket devices or fleets, big rental fleets or big leasing fleets. We take that data on board, we ingest it, and then we start working on the data. We make sure that it has the right quality, that all the security and privacy privacy standards are adhered, and we normalize the data, which is a huge task. Then we make it available through our APIs, and our APIs make it possible to consume the data easily, to uh, use the data into applications uh, for different use cases, whether it be business to business or consumer. This is the value that we bring as a platform. So if we move to the next slide, on top of the platform, we also um, have functionality that allows you to have consent management. So consent management, for instance, for fleets or consent management for consumers who are using an application and are allowing their data to be shared uh, with that application, communicating through our platform to, uh, to the OEM. We have the ability to customized reports. We have a very simple API uh, documentation and integration that makes it possible to consume data uh, within uh, hours, I would say, or within minutes, depends on, on what kind of data you want. And we have a, a, a very easy billing uh, engine. So on top of that, we also make sure that data can be enriched. Uh, we have events. Uh, we can uh, build trips, we can aggregate the data, and we can give the insights. All this on a platform that connects to multiple OEMs, whilst at the same time making sure that all the legislation is, is correctly uh, upheld with the GDPR regulation out of Europe, but also CCPA out of, um, out of the US. So, Privacy and security is, is a top priority for us. We move to the next slide, Bart. So we not only bring value to our data providers who can share that data on, on a platform that's compliant with the major uh, GDPR and CCPA regulation, but also to, um, to our data consumers and to name a few, we talk about traffic management and, and mapping purposes, but also new services like um, insurance uh, that can read the odometer from a car and you pay 
only for the kilometers driven and not for, uh, you know, a standard uh, amount, which nowadays, if you travel less, it's, it's of course very interesting. Or things like EV services, where do I charge my car and how do I solve the range anxiety problems? So we have over a hundred partners on our platform that are using our data into their application and using the data to create insights and to create analysis to make better decisions. Next slide, please. So one of the, the most common questions I get is, you know, why shouldn't I do this myself? And I always encourage people to try it themselves because it's very difficult and it's very cumbersome. So imagine that you have to get contracts with uh, major car manufacturers in the world. And you, that contract basically uh, constitutes a business integration, a legal integration, and an IT integration. IT integration is probably the most simple one, but the legal integration and the commercial integration is very difficult. And let's assume that you succeed in that after a considerable amount of time. Then you run into the problem. I got seven or eight OEMs. I get data from them. I have to pay for it, but they all have different language. So how do you make it one common language? How do you make it uh, so easy to analyze this? And that's where we come in. We basically say with Autonomo, you have one contract on business, one commercial contract, and one data pipe that gives you access to a variety of OEMs, a variety of use cases, and basically make sure that you can focus on what's important, namely consuming the data and using the data for your specific use case or your application. And that's really what, what, what we are about. We accelerate your time to market. We lower your cost by giving you a really easy API to use with a very rich uh, and, and quality-wise high data set. So that brings me to the last slide. Um, and I hope this, this short introduction basically uh, startled your, uh, your curiosity about autonomy and about using connected car data. So I would encourage you to go to our website, autonomo.io, go to the top right-hand corner and sign up to our platform and try us out. There's a 30 day uh, free trial available and you can test the functionality of the platform. You can consume data and you can see how easy it is to use connected car data in your application or to make analysis about a certain uh, traffic pattern. And remember if the data has the right quality, your output also has the right quality. And I think that Bart will now demonstrate how our data basically looks also from a visualized point of view. I will be on the uh, Q&A later on. So if you have any questions, um, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the session. Thank you for your time. Bart, show your magic. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Um, before showing my magic, I want to say also that the way I got in touch with Autonomo was through that platform. And by looking at the data and really by looking at all the different attributes in the data, I was really amazed what is available um, and what all the possible applications and, and solutions that can be built on top of that data. So I'll show some of that later, later today. Um, but we have a first uh, poll question before yep. we dive into that. Okay. Uh, yeah, you already have some questions coming in, Rob. So um, yeah, we've got some good questions I can see already. Uh, right, so poll question three. Um, do you already use traffic data? Yes, no, but I'm considering no, and I'm not considering. Uh, let me bring that one up for you now. Here we go. If you can make your selections now, please. Okay, another couple of seconds. All right, thank you for your answers. And it is split between yes and no, but I'm considering. So let me just share those results. There we go. So thank you everyone for your answers. 
that school. Uh, I'm really surprised by the large amount of, of, of uh, people that are using or considering. Um, and it's, it's going to be one of my tips today. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you now, um, how to become a traffic data analyst rockstar. And basically, um, I'm going to teach you five tips today. Uh, and I hope you take some of them home um, and start using them in your projects. The first one is try to think like Lagrange did. Try to move yourself with the flow. Try to start using this data that is available. And as I will show in the, in, in, in the tutorial later, um, the data is available and the data is everywhere. So you can just start using for any, any project or any street or any environment that you have to start analyzing. Second, pick great quality data. And as Rob said, uh, good quality in can give you good quality out. But the opposite is, is of course, also true. And um, that's a really great thing about Autonomo. You get a uniform, unified view on the data. Then third tip today is start exploring the data visually before building models, before building machine learning models, before running statistics on the data. Uh, because you learn so much by looking at the data. And I'll explain why. Then finally, extract insights. And, and by using data like the autonomous data, uh, you can extract insights much, much quicker. And it's not that you're going to use all data. It's really just data from today or from yesterday. So it's not that by, by going this direction, uh, you have a disadvantage. And then finally, share and collaborate. And that's uh, I think extremely important in these days and especially because we're somehow disconnected um, and you can do that online these days. So share your insights, share your visualizations uh, with your peers, uh, with your superiors, with, with your stakeholders so that they can have a look, start further analyzing and giving you feedback. So throughout this whole process, I'm arguing that visualization is extremely important and that's exactly what we are doing with xyzt.ai. Um, think of it this way. Um, say you have a spreadsheet of numbers. And basically, that's what, if you think about this data flow, you can think about it as, as being a spreadsheet of, of, of data. Um, if you just look at a, a, the Excel file or the CSV file, it's not going to tell you much. On the other hand, if you put the data on a map or in a, another visualization like this, where you have a street network and you color code the streets from green to red, green meaning good, red mean, means like traffic jams, it becomes immediately clear to, 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 to the viewers what's going on. So, and visualization is extremely important because um, that's the way humans work and most of our neurons are um, allocated to the, the visual system. So take that as a third um, tip or trick to become a, a, an analyst rock star. Don't minimize the importance of doing visualization. Uh, when doing visualization and analysis on traffic data, there's uh, unfortunately uh, a number of challenges. The first one is the data is big. And uh, when I talk big, it's really hundreds of millions if you're looking at a city over a month or so. And it gets to the billions if you look at longer periods or bigger areas. So it's, it's a lot of data. And there's unfortunately little tools that can handle visualization and analysis very well with big data. Second, the data has many properties. Um, and if you go and look on the autonomous platform, you will see that there's literally hundreds of properties that you can benefit from. And it's not just velocity or speed of the car or the location of the car. Um, there's properties like, for example, uh, the rain intensity, because the car can measure, measure this also. And then finally, the data is spatial temporal. And that makes it a little bit tricky for humans because, um, sorry for that, we're very good at looking at things that are spatial. But once there's a temporal aspect, it becomes more tricky to visualize things on a 2D surface on a screen. Um, so that's something to be considered. And that's what we solve with xyzt.ai. So we are a big data uh, location analytics platform. Um, we are a SaaS platform, which is software as a service. So we run in the cloud and you just sign on and you log on um, to a web browser. You can do all the analysis in your web browser, even for hundreds of millions or even billions of data points, um, while still maintaining interactivity, uh, which is important when you're doing data exploration. 
and you can take your data live in less than one day. Um, and that's basically what I did also with Autonomo data. I went on to their platform, downloaded some sample data, put it in our platform and started looking at the data. Um, and then later on, we got in touch and um, I asked for some more data. Um, so that brings me basically to um, the part where I want to show you how you can utilize this data um, to become a traffic analyst rock star. Um, so this is the platform, it's a SaaS platform, so uh, you can log in with your team. Um, once you log in, you get onto the latest project. The platform can have different projects. So for example, if you are tasked to analyze a certain area or a certain region, you can upload data into a project uh, and manage that project. You can configure it. You can also involve your team by inviting people, which is extremely important. You can connect background data, and then you can connect the data itself. Um, and this looks li a little bit boring still, and I'll, I'll quickly switch to the maps, but just to give you an idea of the properties in the data, there's a lot of that that you can utilize. You can also see it's quite a bit of data here that I have. I have one month of data, about 60 million records um, in Munich. And let me show you what that looks like. Um, so if I log in to the visual analytics panel, um, this is what you get to see. And I'm going to focus first on the map. Um, so now we are watching one month of traffic data in Munich. Um, and it's in every street, in every highway uh, that belongs to the Munich municipal. So just focusing on this, um, you get to see like the hotspots. Eh? Blue goes from little traffic, white to a lot more traffic. Um, but what's really important to realize is that um, it's not just at this scale, but you can really zoom in um, to any scale and the platform will just fetch the data points at that different scale. Um, I can navigate around, even if it's millions and millions of records. So this gives you like an idea of where to zoom in. And the reason why we also do this heat map analysis at the scale of an entire city, which very little solutions do, is that it gives you hotspots. It gives you insights on where to navigate. Uh, and I'll, I'll show that later on. Uh, second view on the data um, is what you see here on the bottom. So this is a timeline. And I think actually Munich is one hour ahead of um, the timestamp, UTC timestamp in the data. And what you can immediately see from looking at this histogram, which is basically counting the number of records, the number of vehicles basically in the view, uh, what you see here is that in Munich, typically there's a morning commute, an evening commute, and then a Saturday and a Sunday, they are a little bit light on traffic. Now, this is all fine and well, but what's really cool is that we linked everything. So once I start moving this filter here, so say, for example, I want to focus on this weekend and move my slider, you would see that um, the map adapts. And I'm going to use a little different... Um, heat map here that has a little bit more variation in the colors just to show you what is happening. Uh, what I can also do is I can threshold the heat map. So for example, I can move out the areas where there's less traffic. Um, and now you see the areas where there's lots of traffic in the weekend. If I would move maybe to a busy day during the week, you would see that there's more traffic also here on the highways um, and so on. So. This is just the first way of getting an impression of what's going on in the data. Uh, let me fit again on the entire range. So we're looking at the, the entire 60 million data points again. Now I want to show you the third panel. Um, and the third panel is basically here showing a distribution of attributes. Um, so for example, what I see here, and I now selected the entire month, I see the distribution of velocities and What's really interesting is that everything is coupled, just like the timeline is coupled with the map and the map is coupled with the timeline, I can zoom in on an area and you would see that also um, the, the, the attributes here, the, the, the bar charts are updated with what we're looking at. So for example, here we already see just from using heat map visualization, we can see sort of what is the pattern of traffic um, in this area. So this is visualization using hotspot analysis, which is a really cool feature to find like 
um, interesting areas. Of course, what you can also do is you can also color in different ways. And for example, I can color by speed. Um, so what I'm doing here is, for example, say that I want to see everything below, say, 30 kilometers an hour uh, in blue and everything above, say, 50 kilometers an hour in red. And that's what you're seeing here. So basically, you now see um, also with color coding um, what is happening in the streets, what is the velocity, and so on. And by zooming in on an area, I can focus on that specific area and look at the traffic profile in that area. So imagine you have to put up infrastructure equipment to do these measurements using traffic cameras or those counter lines, uh, while now you can just move and navigate to every single street in the city um, and look what's going on. So imagine the models and the automated analysis that you can build on top of this data. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to, oh, maybe before switching um, to my California data set, let me go back to my heat map. Um, what is the most rock star thing about Germans, Rob? Do you know? No. The most rock star thing about Germans is that they can drive as fast as they can. I am. <laughs> I, I was thinking beer and both wars, but that's that's okay. just me. <laughs> no, no, no. I would say it's it's driving. So let's let's analyze how fast um, people drive on the highway. Um, so let me zoom in maybe here on the highway section um, and start um, filtering on the data. So what I can do is instead of just visualizing the data, I can also start filtering. So let me go to the speed uh, analysis and maybe like, okay, let's go above 120, which I think is already illegal in the Netherlands. Um, and there you can see, okay, there's some highlights here, even all the way into the city. Uh, so let me zoom in maybe here on a section that looks um, very interesting. Um, so you can see that's even like 155, 145, so 165. So you see people can drive uh, pretty fast, um, pretty fast in um, in uh, Germany. Um, so having these insights can help also, for example, when you want to do a campaign, you know now exactly where you want to do, oops, where you want to do the campaign in Munich um, to basically um, do some sensibilization on uh, driving at high velocity. Um, this was my first little demo or little tutorial on what you can do with the data. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to another project um, in California, uh, which is quite impressive, I would say. Um, it's about 140 million data records. And um, it's, again, a month of data. So what I'm going to do here is this is the extent of the data. So you see that Autonomo is actually sensing every single road in, in California over this entire month. Um, and again, what I can do is I can zoom in and zoom out. And I'm going to play a little scenario for a traffic analyst um, just to give you an idea of how you could go about and start analyzing uh, visually and sharing the insights with, with, with others. So I was told, and I'm now a traffic analyst, I was told um, uh, by my superiors that basically the celebrities in Los Angeles and then especially the rock star celebrities are considering moving out of Los Angeles. They are considering moving to San Francisco because they are really fed up with the traffic. Um, so what I can do in do now is I can start looking uh, at the general traffic pattern and, and I'll just do that by zooming in. You see there's a lot of um, a lot of white, which means a lot of entries there. Um, so let me switch again, um, showing all the panels that I have to my disposal. Um, so what I see first here is indeed traffic is pretty bad in LA. Traffic is like constantly pretty bad. It's like every day, weekend or no weekend, it's always bad. Um, it's always heavy. Um, and for those of you who have been in LA or maybe live in LA, um, you probably know that. So let me switch maybe also to, to the same heat map that I like to use. Um, and let's see maybe, okay, what, what about traffic jams? So where is traffic really uh, going to a stop? So I'm applying a filter now. Um, and basically I'm going over those 140 million uh, data records. And you see now on the map, basically everywhere there's like highlights and especially here 
um, in downtown Los Angeles. So let me zoom, zoom in on that. Um, and you can see like from the different scale levels and I can always switch back to a, to a lower resolution level to aggregate more data. Uh, you can see all those traffic patterns build up where um, traffic is basically standing still. Um, so without having to go in to the city and measure, I can just look at all those traffic congestion going on. Um, you see here, lots of traffic. I'll get, I'll get back to that. So what, what would an analyst do now? Like is he would like, or she would like think, okay, is this normal? Is it like this everywhere? Now with the data from Autonomo, you can just move to any other city. I can now move to San Francisco, um, just following the Pacific Highway here, um, move to San Francisco um, and start analyzing the traffic in San Francisco. How cool is that? If I'm in Los Angeles in my office, I can just look at San Francisco. Now, so let's look at the, the, the pattern um, during the week. And actually the pattern is a little bit different. It's still sort of continuous, but what you see is that the weekend days, and actually I have to shift my data here a little bit because Los Angeles is eight hours behind. Um, what you can see here is that um, weekend days are even busier than weekdays um, in San Francisco. So it's not certain that it's so, such an interesting idea to move to San Francisco if you're spending a lot of time uh, on the road in the weekend. So let me move back to LA um, and maybe start analyzing a little bit deeper what those uh, rock star celebrities are claiming. So I know from uh, having visited LA a couple of times for conferences, I know that um, a lot of them actually live um, somewhere uh, here in the hills um, near the Hollywood Bowl. So let me let me zoom in and maybe look at uh, the patterns here, what's going on here. Um, so you have the, the different drives up here. Um, let me look at the traffic there. Um, so a good suggestion is to always switch to sort of a, a dark background when you're doing analysis with your data, uh, because that way you get to see um, really what's um, what's going on in the data. So you see a lot of traffic here. Uh, actually, this is Hollywood Boulevard, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, so let's let's analyze a little bit um, what um, what is happening there for those celebrities. So let's pick um, a highway. Um, let me let me look for what I'm looking for. Um, okay, let's let's pick this highway here. Um, lots of congestion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at okay. The celebrities live in the hills. They have to go down the highway a lot. Um, they have to go down the roads here a lot. Uh, so it can get quite busy. So let's pick a, um, I think this is Laurel Canyon. Um, let's pick this crossing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in on this area. I'm gonna define this circle here. I'm gonna call this my first crossing. I'm gonna create a shape, save the shape, and then I can use it for my analysis. So for example, uh, I can add a filter to filter out all other traffic in that area. Um, and this way I get a focus on this, um, on this area. And what I can see from the speed pattern here is that actually traffic speeds are quite low. In fact, there's a lot of um, standing still. And that would also be apparent when I start filtering out on velocity. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a speed fil uh, filter here, which basically focus a little bit on um, the area of interest that I see here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a dashboard. Um, and the dashboard is gonna be, let's call this Laurel Canyon. And um, first crossing. Um, and then I'm gonna save this as a dashboard widget so that my superiors can have a look at it or the people that I co-work with can have a look at it. I'm gonna do the same for the map. Um, I'm gonna add that as a widget. So I right click here, I'm gonna put it in the same widget group um, and I'll give it the same name. That's okay. Um, so by being able to filtering on the data and by creating those dashboards, let me show you the dashboard actually um, that I'm building up now is looking like this. Um, and if I click through on that, I get into the exact same state. So this allows you to share your insights um, with other people because other people can log in uh, if you invite them to the platform. Um, so let me 
have a look at Laurel Canyon a little bit more. So what the, the rockstar celebrity said was that there's a lot of speeding at the crossroads, which I doubt is really happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some more uh, shapes. I'm just going to give them the default name um, along Laurel Canyon. There's some traffic build up here, it looks like. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is basically start analyzing all those um, different crossings. So let me add a filter that basically creates um, a view on all those three different shapes. Um, so this way I have sort of a view just on the crossings in Laurel Canyon Boulevard. And again, as you can see, and I'm going to uh, filter maybe also on the range of the velocities here uh, because the velocities are quite low. You can see that there's not really much speeding, like the average velocity or the, the, the median velocity is like somewhere here is around 40 kilometers an hour. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this with my uh, co-workers um, and I'll call it other crossings. Um, so you see how simple it is just to start analyzing um, different regions, different areas on the map. Um, so finally, maybe one more thing that I could show is that um, the celebrities were also complaining that um, in the weekend when they moved to um, maybe to Palm Springs, because that's where they hang out, um, east of LA. So let me move to Palm Springs here, um, that they have to spend a lot of time in traffic jams. Um, so let me, let me look at the data here and um, zoom in on uh, an area um, in Palm Springs. So what you can see here, this is the main road going towards Palm Springs. So I would suspect that they would mean that they're in traffic jams some, somewhere over here. Um, so let me aggregate the data a bit more so that it gets more clear. So indeed, what you can see, there's like a little bump here. So what I'm going to do is, okay, let's focus on this area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my view and basically look at the east traffic and the west traffic. So uh, as you can see here, there's like a divide in heading. Um, so basically these panels are now also split in left and right. And what you can also see here is that um, the timelines are basically also split in two timelines. So I can sort of do like a comparison analysis in time, in space, and in attribute space, so in all different dimensions. So what I'm going to do is on the left map, I'm going to put a filter basically to look at uh, only traffic that is going east, so somewhere between the 60 and the 120 um, heading. Um, so let me put a filter there, um, something like that. You see, we now see only traffic, and I can also show that on the satellite pictures um, going east. Um, so that's the traffic that you see now. On the right one, I'm going to set uh, another filter, which is basically the inverse filter of the one on the left. And let me also show you that on the, uh, on the satellite imagery. Um, what you can see now by looking at this is that traffic east and west, more or less the same if you look over the entire period. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at the speed pattern, you can see that east, oh, the, wow, there's some pretty fast driving in LA as well. Uh, probably those rock stars are going to Palm Springs in a hurry. Uh, but you see that the traffic east is very fluid, uh, while traffic west is much more congested. Um, and that's an insight that you immediately get from looking at the data. Also at the bottom, you would see that if you look at the traffic patterns, you would actually see that here, for example, you clearly see that the traffic back uh, from Palm Springs is actually uh, very, very uh, congested um, on a Sunday. So apparently most people are driving back from Palm Springs already on Sunday. And in fact, if you look at the traffic here, you would see that they um, mostly come already on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, so these insights you get immediately from playing with the data. Um, what I did is I just showed velocity data um, um, and I used so a little bit of the heading data uh, and of course the locations and so on. Um, what I also want to show is that, uh, and I'm not going to demo that, but there's so much more in the data um, that Autonomo provides. So for example, they also use ultrasonic uh, sensors on the cars to basically detect open parking spaces. 
Um, here's a little example with a subset of the data. Um, let me show that here. Um, so these are all locations where the car sensed open parking spots. So imagine that you use this in a real-time application, ingest the data, you get a, an immediate hotspot analysis of where there's free parking. Um, and for example, you can see that here also in the, uh, when you correlate it with, uh, with the imagery, you can see that on these parking spots, there's been a lot of uh, detections of free parking spaces. And Autonoma does that in real accuracy. So they're really giving the data uh, the centimeter precision of where that open parking spot is. Uh, another type of data that you can get from the platform um, is actually what I'm going to show here. There's a lot of attributes uh, such as, for example, rain intensity um, that you can exploit, exploit in the data. Um, and that can give you a real-time view on, um, on the data. So you could, for example, ingest the data put on a visualization like this um, and immediately get a view on where there's heavy rain uh, on the road and use that information into your, into your operations. So a lot of insights to be gained from the data. Um, and basically that concludes my, my little tutorial on how to exploit the data in a very visual way, how to share the insights uh, with dashboards and, and, and really accessible uh, visualizations. Um, first, I still have a poll, uh, Joe. Yep. Final poll question. Um, so what tools do you use now to visualize and analyze your traffic data? None. Your own BI tools, uh, own algorithms, or I need a good tool. Let me just bring that up for you now. There we go. If you can make your selections, please. Okay, just a couple of seconds more. And I have to say it's quite fairly split. So I'll just uh, share those with you. All right. Good, thank you, Joe. You so go. I want to have you leave with three uh, takeaways that, that I think can make you a rock star traffic data analyst. Um, first one is try to reason in these two different ways of looking at traffic. Try to reason as Euler, place yourself in the environment and what's happening around me. And then second, try to reason also as Lagrange, where you move with the flow and you look around uh, what is happening around you. Um, and then build models or build your applications around that. Second is um, data quality is extremely important. So make sure to go to um, the people of Autonomo to, to use their data because they spend tons of uh, time and effort in, in making sure it's good quality, but also make sure to look at the data because you would be surprised what's in the data, the outliers that might be there, the different properties that might be there or the different meaning of properties. So visualization is extremely important. And that also brings me to the third insight, uh, especially for data scientists and data analysts, um, make sure that you also spend time on clear visualization because that's what triggers the human. And that's the most effective way of conveying uh, your insights uh, into your analysis. So uh, thank you for being with us. Um, if you need data, go to Autonomo. If you need a platform, a visual analytics platform that can handle lots of traffic data, but also other location data, you can come to xyzt.ai. Um, and I'm here with Rob for questions. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Bart. And thank you very much, uh, Rob, as well. Um, we do have quite a lot of questions that have come in. So thank you very much for, for that. Um, we will go up until the top of the hour. Um, so we have nine minutes to try and get through. If we don't get through all of them, then I will take a record of them and then uh, make sure that we uh, get responses uh, to you. So if I can... Just start. I'm just going to go down in order. Um, so I think, first of all, this will be for you, Rob. Uh, what on-vehicle type of sensor would you uh, or would provide the best data? Camera, radar, LiDAR, ultrasound, et cetera, and why? Yeah, so it's uh, it depends on the use case. Um, all the technologies that are listed here um, are basically um, 
available in a low density. So um, if you wanna measure traffic flows, I would say that uh, the, the movement data is much more available. Um, so if you wanna analyze traffic, that would be uh, the right one. In terms of new data sources, because that they're all uh, new data sources, um, let's take, for instance, uh, ultrasound, uh, ultrasonic uh, sensor data. Um, that's quite a new uh, data set that we basically get on board um, and that our data consumers also need to uh, learn to work with and what kind of value there is in it, what kind of density. So I'm sorry, there's no one, one right answer, uh, but it really depends on the use case and what you want to do and where you want to do it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, then one for Bart here. So Bart, you talked about measuring traffic flow using different fluid dynamic methods. Uh, could you explain a bit more about how measuring traffic as fluid flow and using the tools of Lagrangian uh, dynamics um, allows you to understand and control it better? Okay, yeah, very good question. Um, thank you, Andrew. I think it's a question from Andrew, I see. So Andrew, um, yes, yeah, so there's like actually two Two dimensions in in being Lagrangian. The first dimension is like when uh, what Autonomo is doing is basically they put the sensor on the car, so the sensor moves with the car. So that's basically what I mean in this presentation by Lagrangian. The second way of being Lagrangian is what you mentioned is to look at um, the computational fluid dynamics way, is basically by moving with the car and by along with the trip that the car is doing plotting. Or, or basically visualizing what is happening. That's the second Lagrangian way. And that's also interesting. And that I didn't show in the, in, in, in the demo or in the, in the tutorial, but that's actually also what, uh, what, what you can do is uh, along a, tra a trajectory of a car, you can visualize basically, okay, what, what was the velocity um, during the first 15 minutes? What was the velocity along uh, the, the next 15 minutes? And those types of what we call sequence diagrams um, are also extremely interesting to analyze the data, but I didn't show that in the demo. It's actually true that, that there's a second Lagrangian view on doing traffic analysis. Okay, thanks, Bart. Uh, one for you here, Rob. Um, if a data consumer violates the data contract with Autonomo, how is the OEM affected and compensated? So, um, first of all, the, the, the contracts that we have uh, and the data that we have um, must be compliant to uh, data privacy rules. So uh, I'm not saying that nothing can go wrong, but uh, uh, to give you a, a, an insight on, on personal uh, data, basically we have consent from uh, the driver. So that's, that's recorded. Um, we also use anonymization technologies to uh, anonymize the the aggregated uh, uh, data. Um, I can't give a specific answer. Uh, I will try to do afterwards. I, I already pinged uh, our legal department, uh, but they also needed a little bit more context. So, so bear with me that I don't have a uh, direct answer right now, but I will try to get back to you after the session. Okay, thank you. Um... How do you figure out that zero speed means traffic jam, not just parking or waiting, especially when there is no crossing uh, because of the uh, behavior of the cars around? Yeah, very good question. So um, it basically comes from the fact that you not just have one car reporting that zero speed, but a lot of cars. So that's why this heat, heat map analysis becomes extremely valuable because that sort of filters out uh, single detections of like, um, the car stopping. Um, and just by plotting it on a map, we, we as humans, we immediately see it's a congestion because, and if you want to automate that in an algorithm, so to speak, um, you have to think the same way. You have to think like, it's, if it's just one car, um, it's probably not a congestion. So you have to think about, okay, what, how are we going to detect that, it, that it's a congestion? Um, and then you can define your algorithms and your, your, your thresholds typically uh, in, your, in your algorithm or, or your machine learning algorithm, whatever you are using. Um, but it's, it's really from the amount of data that you can make better insights. And that's something that you don't have 
uh, with just measure, following one car or just measuring one street. Um, so that that's my answer to that. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, Rob, is the the data that is available as free trial from Autonomo real or simulated data? Both. So it it can be uh, simulated data. Uh, it can be real data, uh, but of course it's it's a sample. It's not uh, uh, an endless uh, consumption consumption possible, uh, but it gives a, a, a good insight on. Uh, I think we uh, give about a million data points uh, that you can play with. Okay, great. Um, and uh, do you gather data for pedestrians and bicycles, or can you analyze that data? I guess that's to, to both of you. Um, so may maybe I'll go first. Um, I, I, we are a automotive data services platform. We collect data from connected cars. That's already a very big challenge. We get asked a lot, you know, do you also do things like electrical bikes or uh, other sources? But usually uh, what happens is, is that our data consumers are doing that. So we focus on connected car data, we make sure it's you know, clean, that it's easily consumable, it has the right uh, data privacy and security uh, standards uh, up here, um, but we don't have any other data sources on our platform. Right. Thank you, Rob, and then, yeah, for our platform. Our platform is, ag is agnostic to the type of data, so, um, Basically, if there is a location, like a longitude, latitude, or an XY coordinate, whether, when there's a timestamp uh, and when there's attributes, those are optional. Um, we can handle it in the platform. Um, so we have customers using it with maritime data, also with people flow data, um, and sometimes multiple data sources in one project. So to, to, to put everything together. Great, thanks. And the final question uh, for, for both of you, then how does the pricing work for, for both of the, the companies? Bob? So um, it depends on, uh, on what kind of data you are looking for. If we talk about aggregated data, usually we charge per million data points. Uh, if it's personal uh, data, uh, it depends on the use case. It's, it's per API call or a set of API calls. Um, so it depends on the use case, it's either API or it's uh, a data point uh, model. Yeah, and for us, Joe, it's, uh, we're a multi-tier uh, SaaS uh, platform. So we have uh, the first tier is targeted to like the single data analyst um, that really uses the platform as I used it, uh, but just as a single user. And then we have another tier that um, caters to teams of analysts um, where there's also support for API calls so that you can automate data ingestion um, so that you don't have to do that manually. So for example, you could set up a data pipeline that every day ingests data into the platform and that you can then start analyzing and monitoring. Uh, so there's a second tier. And then finally, we also do like an enterprise tier for the, uh, the special cases. Uh, but the information is on the website. Um, okay, wonderful. Right, it is uh, four o'clock here in, in Belgium now, so uh, right on the, on the hour. So I'd like to thank you uh, for attending the, the webinar. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Bart. Um, some great information in there. Uh, you have the details on screen, so please reach out. Uh, there will also be a quick uh, questionnaire that will pop up uh, once the uh, webinar finishes. If you do have any further questions, then please get in touch and uh, we'd love to hear from you. If we didn't get round to answering your questions, um, then like I say, we will take a note of it and we'll then reach out to you uh, directly or put it into a frequently asked, uh, asked questions uh, that we'll add into the, the follow-up uh, email as well. So again, thank you very much for attending. Have a very nice evening or rest of your day and uh, hopefully we'll see you again on our, our next webinar. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.